All right. Happy Friday afternoon to everybody. My name is Drew Nichols. I'm the Dean of Admission at St. Edwards, and I'm thrilled that you all have decided to join us this afternoon to learn a little bit more about the residential experience at St. Edwards. Um, residence life plays an incredibly critical role in your student life experience on the hilltop. Um, so we're excited to be able to share a little bit more information this afternoon about what you can expect next year and going forward. Before we get started, I wanted to just start off with a few housekeeping items so you all know what to expect. Wanted to make sure that everybody knows that video and audio are off and that the way that you can communicate with us is through the Q&A tool. Um, we're gonna wait until the end to answer questions. Um, we also will be answering questions throughout the presentation. So really at any point that you have a question, you can feel free to enter that in the Q&A. Um, we'll go ahead and answer the ones that we can uh, immediately. And for the ones that we feel would be better addressed to the entire group, we'll wait until the end. Um, so again, thrilled that you're here. We won't be using the chat. Um, and I'm gonna turn it over to my colleagues in residence life in order to introduce themselves and get started. Next slide, please. Hello, welcome everyone. My name is Alicia Isom and I'm the Director of Residential Education and I've been on the Hilltop for 17 years now. Good afternoon. Dr. Tom Sullivan, Associate Vice President for Student Affairs and Interim Director of Residence Life Administration and Operations. I've been on the Hilltop 16 years. Hello everyone, I'm Suzanne Rogers, Assistant Director for Housing Administration and I'm in my 20th year here on the Hilltop. Hi, my name is Katie Van Zant. I am a second year student at St. Edwards. I'm a poli sci major and it's my second year at St. Edwards. So it's really nice to be with you all. In our time together today, we're gonna to cover the highlights of living on campus, including camp campus occupancy, why living on campus is so awesome, where you will live, what happens on campus, and last but not least, how to sign up. Next slide, please. This fall, we expect to have 1,339 students living on campus. Up to about 553 of those are going to be first time freshmen living in nine communities. We'll continue the social distance housing model that we implemented this year, which means that all students will have single occupancy bedrooms. Some room styles may share a bathroom with more than one other person, but all bedrooms will be private. Next slide, please. So we're gonna turn it over to Tom to talk about why you should live on campus. And there are many reasons for it, but I would start with why would we get on a plane and, and fly to Paris to see the Eiffel Tower? Why would we go out and see the Grand Canyon in person uh, or the Great Pyramids in Egypt? I would contend that we do these things because being in person with other people, seeing other things uh, brings these experiences to life in ways that that doing something online um, just doesn't match. And so it's because of the hearts and minds of all of you that we want to bring you on campus and have you experience um, this wonderful residential opportunity. Next slide, please. And that really begins with talking about the advantages and, and the way in which we support academic success. Uh, Living on campus uh, provides us the opportunity to um, have easy access to your classes, uh, to your faculty advisors, uh, and all the campus resources that are immediately at your fingertips or just right outside your door. Uh, additionally, living on campus means it's easier to meet with uh, other students for group projects or just to have some fun. Uh, join study groups uh, and complete homework assignments uh, in uh, your surroundings that uh, best offers access to the library or other resources that help you uh, in your academic pursuits. Next slide, please. Now, building community is incredibly important and 
uh, living on campus affords you uh, an incredible uh, experience to engage with others. You don't have to drive back and forth from campus to an off-campus residence. Uh, when you're joining student organizations or, or just heading from class. Um, speaking of uh, opportunities, I would point out that uh, it also allows you to develop uh, deeper and more enriching relationships with those around campus, whether it's uh, those that you live in community with in the residential space um, and, and those right down the hall, um, or again, uh, other students and student organizations uh, in the recreation spaces uh, at a women's soccer game. Uh, there's all sorts of great opportunities to, to build community and make connections. Next slide, please. And the amenities uh, mean a lot. Uh, our residential communities provide you with all the amenities that, that you could need to be comfortable uh, in your new home. Rooms are furnished and most importantly, laundry is free. Uh, you'll have access to the community kitchen, uh, computer labs and social areas with pool tables, ping pong, large screen televisions uh, and gaming equipment. What more could you want? Our halls are equipped with Google Fiber Internet uh, and maintenance needs uh, can report it electronically and easily uh, for safety purposes so that, um, you know, as you enter the building and as you have various needs, uh, they're easily addressed and quickly addressed. Next slide, please. And so now we're going to turn it over to Suzanne. So an important thing to know about St. Edwards is that all freshman students live in all freshman communities. So let's take a look at your housing options. Next slide, please. As we mentioned earlier, we have nine communities this coming fall available to freshmen. On the southwest side of campus, there are three residence halls we call the complex. The complex consists of Basil Moreau Hall and Casitas, Dujarier Hall and Casitas, and the Casa, which shares amenities with Basil Moreau Hall. There are private and shared bath options in these halls. These locations offer easy access to South, South Congress Dining Hall, Joe's Coffee Shop, and the Recreation Center. Next slide, please. Then toward the Northeast side of campus are three more residences. These are Hunt, Lamon, and Johnson Halls. This community is also known as the Village. And we're looking at a picture of the Canyon, which is part of the Village. Nearby is Teresa Hall. These rooms in these communities are all suite style rooms. Living in these areas gives easy access to Hunt Dining Hall, the Health and Counseling Center, and the Recreation Field. Next slide, please. Now we're gonna turn it over to Alicia Isom to talk about what happens when you're living on campus. Suzanne. The Office of Residence Life strives to make our residence halls and apartments a home away from home for students. As the Director of Residential Education, I oversee the overall residential experience and I supervise the student and professional staff who live in the residence halls. Our staff is here to support, encourage, challenge, and help you grow in throughout the year. The student leaders working in your community are called Resident Assistants, or RAs, and their primary responsibilities are to develop one-on-one -on -one relationships, to serve as a resource and connect students to other campus support, facilitate educational programs and fun activities, build community between residents, and help maintain our community standards. Oftentimes, a student's RA is the first person they'll seek out when they have questions or concerns. Each residential community is managed by a residence director that we call an RD. Our Ds are professional staff members with master's degrees in student development, higher education, counseling, or leadership. They also live in the residence halls and they manage all aspects of their residential community, supervise the RAs, and serve as another layer of support for students. Next slide, please. Next slide. Our residential communities are not just places for students to sleep and study, 
We want students to have a transformational experience. So we've built our residential program so that students living on campus will have the opportunity to do four things. Number one, develop their independent living skills. Number two, build community and relationships. Number three, prioritize health and wellness. And four, grow personally and intellectually. Programs can range from seemingly simple things like how do you do laundry to more challenging things about how do you excel at college level exams or writing research papers. You may go to your lobby and hear a professor speak about social justice or climate change, or maybe your RA will organize a karaoke night in the lobby or a dodgeball game against another hall. There are plenty of ways to get involved and the residence life staff leads the way in helping you get connected to campus life. Next slide, please. And last but not least, we want to ensure that our students are safe and able to access the resources they need to be successful on campus. As Dr. Sullivan mentioned, entry into each residence hall is via card access and there are three layers of staff on call 24 hours a day. There's always an RA on call, an RD on call, and someone at the administrative level like myself on call. We also work very closely with our campus partners, including the Health and Counseling Center, Success Coaches, UPD, and the Dean of Students Office. We all work together to help you be successful. And now I'm gonna turn it over to Katie so you can hear from one of our St. Edwards Hilltoppers. Next slide, please. Hi, my name is Katie. I am a second year poli sci major and I currently live on campus as a sophomore in the St. Andre apartments, which has been a wonderful experience and a lot of people think they don't want to live on campus after their freshman year, but I highly recommend it because you have that safety net behind you. Even while you're living on your own in an apartment, there's still people behind you, like Alicia just said, RDs, RAs, and even administrative administrators. Um, my freshman year, I actually was lucky enough to live in two different places on campus. I lived in Le Mans Hall, which is part of the village, and then I lived in Basil Row, which is part of the complex. And in both experiences, my RAs and RDs uh, made sure everyone felt included. They um, had so many different programs going on. We had movie nights all the time. Um, and the RAs always just said, our door's open if you need to talk. So if you get overwhelmed or anything, there's always someone there to back, back you up and be there in your corner to help you. Um, also living on campus, there are just so many other opportunities outside of your residence halls, um, like clubs. I am actually in the women's club lacrosse team, and it's been such a wonderful experience to make friends outside of your residence halls but the people in your residence hall are definitely going to be there for a long time. They'll be your friends for a while because you basically do live with them. And it's just an amazing experience. And I wouldn't trade my experience living on the hilltop for anything else. So next slide, please. Thank you, Katie. Well, now that you know more about where to live, I guess you're asking, where do I sign up? Next slide, please. So the first step is to commit to the university and submit your enrollment deposit. This takes about 24 to 48 hours to clear our system, but once that's been processed, you'll receive an email invitation for a course called Hill Start. Hill Start is your key to accomplishing all the things you need to do to get ready to enter your freshman year. When uh, you get this course, you'll have access to those requirements, including the housing application. So you'll submit everything online. And as you work through the application, you'll be able to see potential suite mates and then eventually pick your bedroom and right down to your bedroom. Next slide, please. So to summarize, First, submit your enrollment de deposit. Give it about 24 to 48 hours to process. Receive your invitation to Hill Start, and then access your online application to pick your home on the hilltop. Next slide, please. We're gonna turn it back over to Dr. Sullivan to answer a few more questions about some more procedures. So, uh... Living on campus is just a, a wonderful opportunity, uh, no matter what year. Uh, and certainly we recognize that we are still uh, within the pandemic. And, and so the university remains committed 
to the health and safety of all of our students, faculty, and staff. We've maintained a, a healthy, active community of residents this academic year during the pandemic, and we'll continue to use what we've learned uh, from this experience to strengthen an already sound approach to our uh, support of the residential student. With that, we continue to work with our team of medical advisors on safety precautions for the fall of 2021. And the university has implemented asymptomatic COVID-19 testing, which means that we regularly test those with no COVID symptoms in an effort to ensure the health and safety of everyone on campus while directly uh, providing uh, support services to anyone who does test positive. Additionally, the university plans on expanding on campus health services for this coming year, which provides great benefits to our students who may need some uh, form of medical care. Now, students will have access uh, to medical support uh, just steps away from where they live on campus so that that health care is, is embedded within the community. I should note that we're also working with regional health providers on uh, general vaccine access for the campus community. And of course, we continue to wear our masks and engage in uh, social distancing practices as recommended. So all in all, uh, we believe that, that we continue to provide and sharpen uh, just a wonderful uh, living experience uh, for our Hilltoppers. And with that, I'd like to throw it back to Drew uh, to move us into our Q&A portion of the webinar. Thanks so much, Tom, and to the entire Residence Life staff for all that really helpful information. Um, we are taking questions now, so don't be shy if you have questions about um, any part of the process, about what it's like to live on campus, about specific halls. Um, we are, we're happy to answer anything that, that you have for us at this point. A um, couple housekeeping things that I can go through just as we're, we're waiting to see if any questions come in. Um, congratulations to those of you all who are, are on tonight who are uh, accepted seniors. Um, congratulations on uh, navigating the college admission process during a really unusual time. Um, we're thrilled to, to think about you joining our community next year and look forward to welcoming many of you. Um, as Suzanne mentioned, the next step in the process to secure your spot would be to, would be to submit your enrollment deposit. And the enrollment deposit is $500 and it basically just says, yes, I plan on attending St. Edwards. It goes towards your first tuition, uh, first semester tuition. Um, but the next step after you submit your enrollment deposit is that you would be able to sign up for housing and orientation, which I recognize is something that probably many of you all are, are really interested in at this point. Um, also wanted to encourage folks to visit campus if they haven't already, if you haven't already. Um, we are doing campus visit programs. You can visit our website at www.stedwards.edu backslash visit. Um, and it will give you all of the different ways to engage with us either virtually or in person. And we're doing in-person tours Monday, Wednesday, and Friday and about every other Saturday. We have a specific tour on Friday at 2 p.m. for admitted students. And during that admitted student tour, you actually have the opportunity to see a residence hall room. So um, if that's something that's really important to you and you're wanting to get a sense of the space, um, we would be able to deliver that if you, if you come for one of those tours. Um, we also recognize that not all of you will be able to come to campus. Um, perhaps you're not comfortable coming to campus yet, and, and that's okay too. We have lots of opportunities to engage virtually over the next few months. So there are different uh, Friday and focus programs like the one that you're participating in today. Um, we also do virtual info sessions and virtual campus tours that would allow you to get a sense of campus. So um, all of that to say, reach out, let us know what we can do to be, do to be helpful. We wanna help you to continue to navigate this process. We wanna be a resource to you. Um, and on the bottom of this slide, you can actually see the admit uh, dot at, at stedwards.edu email address, which is our main admission email address. You can always feel free to reach out there. And if you have specific residence life questions, there's also the contact information for residence life. So with that, I'm gonna go to some questions. It looks like we have a couple of them. So the first is how and when do we build a profile for roommate selection? I'll take that one. Um, there is a questionnaire in the housing application that allows you to answer about 
five to seven questions about yourself, including your activities, your interests, your um, music, live music preferences, some things that are uh, common to our students here on the hilltop, and then what you'd like to have in to see in a roommate, or in this case, a suite mate for next year. Um, you can shop around and see other students who have submitted their profiles as well and compare answers, um, perhaps picking a suite mate who uh, matches some of your, your interests. So um, it's a fun tool. And once uh, the, the main thing is the other students have to have started their application as well. So if you have a friend or someone you're looking for who hasn't completed that, that uh, application process, they may not be in the system yet, but it is definitely in the application. Perfect. Thanks so much, Suzanne. And I would just really emphasize, want to make sure that everybody understands that next year, all rooms will be singles. So to Suzanne's point, you'll really, you'll be selecting a suite mate as opposed to a roommate um, as we continue to distance on the hilltop. So thanks for that response, Suzanne, and thanks for the, the good question. Um, okay, another question, with students having no roommates next semester, will there be enough housing for the incoming freshman class? Yeah, I'll, I'll jump on that. It's a good question and, and you bet we will. Uh, through the socially distanced housing model that, that we have engaged in, uh, we prioritize and, and make sure that our incoming freshman class um, has uh, plenty of space to live on campus. And so um, we have set up that model to ensure that uh, as you go through and, and look at those options, um, that they are robust. Uh, and yet we still will have uh, space for our, our returning students as well. Uh, and, you know, expect, as I believe Suzanne mentioned at the beginning of the program, uh, upwards and over 1300 students living on campus. And so uh, we can't wait to have uh, you as part of our incoming class uh, join us in one of uh, our residential communities. Great, thanks for that. Got a question about camp. Do camp students have to live in a specific hall and do all housing halls have the same cost? I caught the first part of that and then it cut out, but um, camp students can select from any of the available housing that is of interest to them. And what was the second part? The second part was just do all of the do all of the residence halls have the same cost or are there there are differences in price? There are differences in price. Um, they're fairly level, but um, depending on it, it breaks down a little bit less expensive when you're sharing a bathroom with more more than one person or uh, have a private bath. So um, there is a small fluctuation in the price depending on uh, what style of room it is. Right. That's actually a good segue to the next question, which is, will it be possible to have a single room and bathroom during the 2022-2023 academic year? And I think perhaps they mean 2021-2022 academic year. There are multiple opportunities throughout uh, the halls to have the single bedroom, single bathroom option. We will look if, if the 22-23 um, is in fact what they're asking about. Um, we'll look at um, what the state of the, the pandemic is at that point. We hope that we will be back to having roommates. So um, there wouldn't be as many options if we went back to that roommate model. All right, thanks for that. What halls do incoming freshmen typically, in, incoming freshmen typically get? Suzanne, you want to take that one? I know you want to, want to grab that one. Um, typically, the residential communities for freshmen are the main halls of Basil Moreau Hall, Dujarier Hall, the Village, uh, Hunt and Lamont Hall, and when Teresa is available, Teresa Hall. Um, Depending on our expanded occupancy for the freshman class, um, this year we are including Johnson Hall and the Casitas and the Casa, um, but in the past those have been upperclassmen spaces, so depending on our occupancy models in the future, um, those could be for freshmen, could be for upperclassmen. Great. And then there's a question about uh, freshmen bringing cars to campus. So uh, are freshmen allowed to bring cars and what are the appro approximate costs of parking? 
and I can field that one. Freshmen are allowed to bring cars to campus. Um, certainly something that uh, we're happy to have you do. Um, I always tell freshmen to, to think about whether they wanna be the ones giving a ride or getting a ride. Um, and if they decide to bring a car, then that's great. If they decide not to bring a car, um, that that uh, they'll certainly know other folks on campus who would, will have cars and would be able to drive them around. Um, the cost of the parking permit, I actually, I'm gonna circle back to you on that one after the next question, because I, I need to look up what it will be for next year. It's a few hundred dollars typically, but I can, I can circle back with the exact cost. All right, another question. Uh, what happens if housing is needed for a winter session or a summer session? Are there academic on-campus options for winter and summer sessions? The freshman communities do close for the winter break, so students are uh, expected to make other arrangements. Um, there is summer housing available. Uh, this coming summer, it will be in a limited capacity, but we will provide housing for those students who need to be here. Um, the, the halls do shut down, though, so for upperclassmen who live in the uh, campus apartments, there is an opportunity to stay year round. Does that answer the question? Or anybody want to contribute anything else to that? No, I think you, uh, you hit it. All right, and then there's a, a, another question about are there single sex floors and are the suites single sex? Can you repeat the question? Yeah, sure. So are there single sex floors and are the, are the suites single sex? Suites are single sex. However, the halls are co-ed by room. So a student would never be sharing a bathroom with someone of the opposite gender, um, but they might have a next door neighbor who is the opposite sex. And that holds true for the casitas as well. The casitas have say five rooms and two bathrooms or three bathrooms, uh, that's all gonna be one gender. Great. Perfect. And just to circle back to the, the question about on-campus parking, um, I believe next year it's three, $310 per semester for a, a parking permit. Um, parking is really accessible on campus. So if you get a parking permit, um, that means that you will, you know, you'll, you'll be able to park on campus close to your hall or close to, um, or close to your classes. We don't have assigned parking, um, but I know that there are some universities where if you have a parking permit, it doesn't even necessarily guarantee that you'll have a place anywhere on campus. Um, and at St. Edwards, you know, it might be the case some days you might have to walk a little bit further than others, but you will always be guaranteed a spot. All right, I think that that might be the final question. We'll wait just another minute to see if anybody has any final questions. Again, we're thrilled that you decided to take some time on your Friday afternoon to, to join us. Um, a big thanks to Tom and Suzanne and Alicia for their presentation um, from Residence Life. We, we really are excited about continuing to work with you all um, throughout this spring. Um, we're excited about getting back to campus this coming fall and uh, having orientation and, and really just welcoming a new group of students to the Hilltop. So anything that we can do to assist through the process, um, please do not hesitate to reach out. Know that we wanna be a resource in the admission office and that the community at St. Edwards were incredibly collaborative. And so if we don't have the answer to your question, we'll be sure to connect you with somebody who does. Um, but for joining us this afternoon and we will sign off and hopefully see some of you on campus this fall.